Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we are going to learn about the gray code. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today, at first we will acquire the understanding of gray code. Thereafter, we will observe the binary to gray conversion and vice versa. Now coming to gray code, these are actually non-weighted, right? Also, gray codes are reflexive. Now what do I mean by reflexive? Let me illustrate. With one bit place, the possible sequences that we can have in binary is 0 and 1, right? Now in gray, when we find out the possible sequences with two bit places, we actually have to mirror it. That is, apart from the MSB, the remaining bits, which in this case only is the LSB, will be mirrored like this. Thereafter, the upper portion will be accompanied by the zeros. And the lower portion, that is the mirrored portion, will be accompanied by ones. And thus, we will end up acquiring all the possible four sequences with two bit places. Similarly, to generate all the possible combinations with three bit places in gray, first, except the MSB, we will have to mirror rest of the bits. So we will place a mirror in here. And thereafter, the bit places will be mirrored like this. That is, 1010111111101 and finally 0000. Now similar to the previous one, here also the upper portion will be accompanied by all the zeros in MSB and the lower portion will be accompanied by all the ones. And this is how we will end up acquiring all the different sequences possible with 3 bit gray code. Now with 3 bit, we actually can derive 8 different sequences and that is encoding of decimal 0 to 7 in gray. Now gray codes are also unit distant. Now what do I mean by unit distant? Observe the subsequent encodings. Say these two. See this is 000 and this is 001. Now to convert these particular patterns to one another, all we have to do is toggle the LSB, right? And this holds for all the different patterns. For an instance, consider these two patterns. Here also in order to convert this pattern to this one, all we have to do is toggle the LSB. This concept is known as distance. Say we have two different patterns, 4 ones and 0011. Now in order to convert this pattern to this one, all we have to do is toggle these two bits, right? Therefore, the distance between these two is 2. However, in case of gray, the distance is unit or 1. And that is why gray is called unit distant. Now, gray codes are also cyclic in nature. Now, what do I mean by cyclic? Observe the first pattern in this sequence that is 000 and the last pattern 100. In order to convert this particular pattern to this one, all we have to do is toggle the MSB, right? Now, due to mirror imaging, this was possible. And this is the reason why gray codes are called cyclic. So, this is all about the gray code. Let's now move on to the binary to gray conversion. Say we have a binary number 1001. Now in order to obtain its equivalent gray code, first we will keep the MSB as it is. Now for the remaining bits, we will have to perform a trick. And what is that? We have to take this particular bit and then XOR it with this bit. Now remember, in case of XOR, if two different bits are inputs and both of them are different than one another, then we will obtain one. And this is how we obtain the second bit. Now the next bit will also be obtained in the similar manner. That is, we will select this bit and this bit and perform XOR. Now since the bits are same, we will end up having zero, right? Continuing the same process, selecting this zero and this one and performing XOR in between them, we will end up obtaining one. So this is the gray equivalent of the binary pattern 1001. Now from this, we can obtain a generalization, that is, say we have a binary number B3, B2, B1 and B0. Similarly, we also have a gray value G3, G2, G1, G0. Now G3 can be obtained directly by B3 as we did in here. Then G2 can be obtained if we perform XOR between B3 and B2, right? Like we did in here, this was B3 and this is B2 and performing XOR in between these two, we obtain G2, right? Thereafter, G1 can be obtained by performing XOR between B2 and B1. And finally, G0 can be obtained by performing XOR between B1 and B0. Let's construct the binary to gray circuit now. 
So first B3 will be directly G3. Now with B3, if we XOR B2, we will end up having G2, right? As we have said in here. Similarly, with B2, if we XOR B1, we will end up having G1. And finally, with B1, if we XOR B0, we will end up having G0. So this is the circuit which will convert a 4-bit binary into its equivalent gray code. Let's now move on to the gray to binary conversion. Say this time we have a gray value 1001. Now the binary equivalent of that can be obtained first by keeping the MSB as it is. Now the derivation of the remaining bits is going to be a little bit more interesting. This time we will select this particular bit and with this we will perform XOR of this one and finally we will end up having 1, right? Now why so? Because 1 XOR 0 is 1. Continuing this process, this time we will select this particular bit and this bit and perform the XOR between these two. This time also we will end up having 1, right? Because 1 XOR 0 is 1 again. Now in order to obtain the LSB, we will have to select this one and this one and perform the XOR between them. Now since these two are same, therefore the result of XOR will give us 0. Now from this, we can also state a generalization. Say we have a gray number G3, G2, G1 and G0. And similarly, we have a binary number B3, B2, B1, B0. This time, B3 can be obtained by G3 directly like we did in here. But in order to obtain B2, we will have to perform XOR between B3 and G2. So this was B3 and this is G2, right? And performing XOR between them, we obtained B2. Thereafter, B1 can be obtained by performing XOR between B2 and G1. Similarly, B0 can be obtained by performing XOR between B1 and G0. Let's now construct the gray to binary circuit. So G3 will directly derive B3. Now since G3 and B3 are the same value, therefore with G3, if we perform XOR of G2, we will end up having B2. Now with the output of this XOR gate, if we perform the XOR of G1, then we will end up having B1. Basically, in order to obtain B1, we are performing XOR between B2 and G1. Similarly, with the output of this XOR gate, if we XOR G0, we will end up having B0. So using this particular circuit, we can obtain the binary of any 4-bit gray value. So in this session, we first acquired the understanding of gray code. Thereafter, we observed the binary to gray conversion and vice versa. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will learn about error detection. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.